for a long time. He'll play tight, like a knit box for hours, and then all of a sudden he'll start splashing around. Just So he's just quite unpredictable. Very good evaluation. Well, these two guys have played a lot of cash games together over the course of their career. And right now, Ryan's going to cover up. I'm all in. And Phil goes out, but he says he's going Call. all in. And Call. Call. <laughs> Look at this bluffing going on here. He knew what, what I was doing anyways. Well, Ryan bluffing right back at him by saying call. He knew. He's played with me for 10 years. I call. We have the chips. I don't get it. <laughs> I probably shouldn't even show the kids at home that trick, you know? What, hiding? Do you get a mama hide? No, you just throw the hand away and then the guy's still hiding. Yeah, they've done it to me. Every time I hide, they do that. <laughs> you know, I'm laying on the couch. They say, I'm all in at the end. I didn't even have to look up. I was calling. Ryan with a good move, playing nine high in great form. All right, right back at it. Jordan Grace. is going to make it 400,000 with ace eight. And now Alex has a pair of fives. He's going to ship it here, Vince. Oh, yeah. Look at this. An all in bet by Alex with just two fives. He's got the speed limit here. Will he be caught speeding? Don't do that. Everyone else going out. And Jordan saying, How much more is going to cost me? It's like a snap fold in my head. I just want to. Make sure it's too much. That's yeah, another 1.3 million for him to call. It's like king, queen, queen, jack. There's a little over 2.5 million in the pot, meaning he's getting about two to one odds on his money. Can't make this call. Anytime you have an ace in your hand, you're not more than two to one dog unless your opponent specifically has two aces. <laughs> and there's Jordan's parents, Kathy and Jeff, rooting on their son. Will he make the right decision here? Fold. You know what, he's going to fold it. And he lays it down, so it turns out to be a real good all-in bet by Alex. Yeah. King, queen of clubs. What did you have if you're trying to figure out what I have? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I just, uh, I'm just thinking out Were you dominated by that? It sounded like in your combo? I'm, I'm not going to say, but... Okay. I, you just want I, me to say what I have, but you're not going to no, say No, I don't want you. I got you. I, I don't you. want you to tell me what you have. I was I was just thinking out I got loud. You. I'm just messing asking I know, me I questions. I know. I know. Right. I know you won't tell me what I had. I won't tell you what you had. Right, players remain here on the World Poker Tour at the Bicycle Casino. Stay with us. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. The WPT Foundation supports global charities throughout the year with special events and online auctions. Please visit WPTFoundation.org to find out how you can help the WPT Foundation in playing for a better world. Welcome back to the Bicycle Casino and the Legends of Poker. Yeah, Mike, lots of fun to be had here at the bike. And earlier this week, the Royal Flush girls, Brittany and Danielle, had a great time trying their luck and playing in the party pit. Always great action at the bike. And right now, we still have five players going after this Legends of Poker title. Let's go and check the chip counts and get back down to the tilt. Well, here you see a graph of percentages that each player has. With five players left, if you had 20% of the chips, you would have average. You see Ryan well out in front with 37%. Dan on a short stack with just 11% of the chips. Well, we are getting fancy here on the World Poker Tour. Like you need those stats to find out who's winning. One guy's winning, one guy's losing. Let's get on with it. Back to the action we go. Technology events. What is get with it. Oh, I'm is sorry. It Thank you. Quick fold by Phil Locke. And now Ryan with a 10-9 will raise the 375 to go. Well, the chip leader continues to apply pressure. Got the suited connectors here. Fold it around to Alex. Ryan can't look. And take a little nap. Well, it's on Alex. He's got queen four. He's in the big blind. But no, he will not play this. Just hard to clash against the chip leader. You think he's at it a little bit, but still, you just hate to jeopardize your chips when the guy can bust you. Ryan going to going to take that pot. First place, 613,000 here tonight to be given away to our champion. Who will it be? Action now on Jordan Christos. And he's got the famed Doyle Brunson hand, the 10 do suited. Doyle, a former winner of this event. In the main event of the World Series of Poker, two years in a row, holding a 10-deuce. That's why this hand is named after him. Well, Jordan has raised the 300,000 with his Doyle hand. He's got one man out, now Phil Locke, with nine-deuce. 
comes to his senses. And now Ryan, also with an awful hand, won't play, but Dan with an ace three. And he is going to stick around for this. He makes the snap call with the ace high. <coughs> it's the ace high versus the Doyle Brunton. And the flop comes up nine, eight, six. That gives a straight draw, of course, for Jordan. Dan's gonna check. Dan hit none of that. Well, Jordan could check to get the free draw at the gut shot straight if he opted to take that approach. Jordan, a couple of years of college, he quit it for poker and music. And it looks like it's paying off here nicely tonight. And he's getting chips out. Yep, 225. I'll tell you, Doyle Brunson gonna be proud of this guy, Vince. <laughs> Dan is tricky. Can't fall. He's not gonna call or play back at him, so Dan's gonna fold. Jordan nicely played. And Christos Nation comes alive as their man is really doing well right now. JC in blue, FPW. They got posters, you gotta cheer. Anyone who makes a poster gets cheered for, you know? It's a rule, it's like a thing. It's an etiquette book of, po of cheering or something. Season 12 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of 100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime plan poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to the WPT's coverage of the Legends of Poker. I'm excited to say that Tony Dunst is back this season to keep dealing out his own brand of poker justice, starting with this edition of The Raw Deal. There's no question that Phil Locke has earned his reputation for erratic behavior. Whether he's shadow boxing as the Unabomber, walking like a dinosaur, or impersonating a member of Daft Punk, Phil is a man that never fails to surprise. He's simultaneously too aggressive. I'm all in. And too passive. But how is that possible? Let's break it down. First, there was the hand where Phil held nines against the eights of Jordan Christos. Jordan raises preflop and Phil just calls in position, which I like. Jordan Christos, I'm gonna put in the same number of chips in the same denomination that you put in. But I was confounded watching Phil check twice on the four, 10, six deuce board. Then later on, we watch Phil make a 4x raise out of the small blind with Queen Jack against Ryan Gowindu in the big blind. But I wasn't sure why Phil didn't follow through with a bet on the ace-king four flop. He can't win the pot by checking because he'll be bluffed out most of the time his opponent has a weaker hand. I'm all in. Call. <laughs> you knew what, what I was doing anyways. Yet in between those hands with passive play, we also watched Phil get too aggressive. I know he wants to mix it up sometimes, but I think he went too far in his big pot against Dan Heimiller. When the flop comes at ideal two, three, six, Phil goes all in for two and a half times pot. Dan Heimiller, I'm all in. But what exactly is the point of shoving here? Dan will call with all his better hands, fold all his worse ones. Have a nice day. And doesn't have a chance to bet the hands he was bluffing with. Tell me if that's a mistake or if I'm supposed to take a card. So while Phil always finds a way to surprise me, it was actually his play at this final table that was truly shocking. I went all in, I didn't show up, Parlay. You told me not to show, right? Don't show, stay true. My coach says don't show. Then again, nobody really watches Phil for his stellar poker abilities. We're all compelled by the cartoonish antics. Well, what Tony forgot to mention, Vince, was Phil's been pretty successful in his poker career, I'll tell you that. World Series of Poker Bracelet, WPT title, Party Poker World Poker Open Championship, and a big winner in high-stakes cash games. You can't knock success, but Tony just did. Nevertheless, <laughs> the Unibomb is at the final table. Here we go again, five players remain. Action on Phil, he's got a 9-8. The madman won't play that hand, but Ryan also going out. And High Miller looking down at King Nine of Hearts in the small blind. Dan in fifth chip position right now. I forgot how much money I got here. Watching Dan work is always one of them. It's always a... Entertainment? It's a nice little, it's a quiet privilege that I am happy to have some time with him. Dan Highmiller, his forehead about as red as those two hearts right now, but opts the conservative route, just calls with the King Nine of Hearts. 
Jordan has been pretty tight for the most part. And uh, he just waits, waits, waits. So hopefully I can take advantage of that. Jordan doesn't have too much of a hand. And he Whoa! will just see the flop with his 8-6. That long for a check? No! There should be a penalty for that or something. Jordan Christos. This is a young guy that quit college to play poker and music. King-9 versus 8-6. And the first three cards are an ace, king-10, kings for Dan. So Dan out in front with the two kings, going to check him. Jordan going to try to steal this pot here with a $150,000 bet, but no way Dan's going to believe he's got an ace in his hand because he didn't raise before the flop. So. And Dan has figured it out. He comes back over the top, making a 400000 Quick buck for Jordan. Dan says thank you very much for the 150. I'll put that in my little purse and move <laughs> on. Yeah, Jordan talking to himself right now. Say, what was I thinking? I didn't raise before the flop. Then I'm going to try to represent aces and kings. Don't do that again. Right back, Adam. Phil Locke resting. Ryan, our chip leader, not going to play. Now Dan High Miller also folding. It's around to Jordan. Who's got an attractive jack, 10 of diamonds. All in. He says, I'm going all in to you, Alex. Bold bet right there. If you don't have a big hand, you can't possibly call. He does not. 26-year-old Jordan Christos starting to step it up. Are they taking a shot every time he wins a hand? <laughs> He's in second chip position. What a battle we're having. That hand signals the end of our second hour of coverage from the Legends of Poker. Guys, what are your final thoughts on tonight's play? Well, Ryan going do still our big chip leader at this final table with five players left. But really, you got to say it's anybody's game. Oh, you're right, Mike. It's battle of wits and nerve here tonight. Very clever poker players going at it for a major title at the Legends of Poker. It is up for grabs. This will definitely be an exciting finish. Please join us next time when we crown the Legends of Poker champion at the Bicycle Casino. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls and everyone here at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. The World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Since the inaugural season of the WPT, 11 players have staked their claim as legends at the Bicycle Casino. Who will be number 12? The dramatic conclusion of the Legends of Poker is happening tonight on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He is circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He would love to knock this loudmouth out. Oh! Welcome back to the WPT's coverage of The Legends of Poker. I'm Lynn Gilmartin. After six days of hard-fought competition, we are close to crowning a new WPT champion. Tonight, I'm joined by my esteemed colleagues Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Guys, with the finish line now in sight, how do you see the action playing out? Well, Ryan going to in command. He's the chip leader right now with five players left. But all the other players have got over a couple million in chips. So, really, it's anybody's game and whoever wants it the most, fights the most for the pots, I think we'll take home this title. Thanks, Mike. And Vince, who's your pick to hoist the WPT Champions Cup in victory tonight? Well, you know, I'm just guessing, but uh, I'll have to go with Phil Locke. You know, he's the Unabomber. He's a tough player. It's been a few years since he took a WPT title. He's overdue. Maybe it's his night tonight. Well, guys, this should be quite the battle with over $600,000 and the WPT Champions Cup on the line. Looks like the action is about to get underway, so let's check the chip counts and head to the table. Well, there you can see Ryan Goindu from Trinidad, now living in L.A., well out in front with about $8 million in chips. The youngster at the table, Jordan Christos, in second place with just over $5 million. All right, Andy's at $25,000, blinds are seventy-five, one fifty. dollars Ryan going to the local, plays a lot of cash games and tournaments. He folds his hand now, Dan Highmiller, also a local. 20-year tournament pro. He's going to raise with 8-7, Mike, 4.25 to go. Jordan Christos out. That's on Alex Masix. 
Alex, a 28-year-old professional poker player. He's going out. Okay, it's on to Phil Locke, the Unabomber. He's the goggle man tonight, Vince. He's got a six, and he's going to fold. Just like that, they respect Dan Highmiller. So Dan Highmiller taking down that pot. But right now, let's get a little more insight into the man himself, Phil Locke. The things that I love about poker are very simple. One, you the uh, characters you meet are varied and wide would be an understatement. And two, uh, it satisfies a lot of man's primal need for uh, returning to something, which is a direct uh, feeling of uh, autonomy, some power control over what's going on, something that's complex enough to hold our attention. We're all pushing the web of consciousness. The plasma state is just as exciting as the real thing. The more you go down the rabbit hole and tendril around and see the dark and the lit and the weird corners. Now it's a state of a thousand million things. Infinite, it's an infinite. Like in judo, how you take the other guy's force and you flip with it. The only class I got an A in, well, it was two. Trampling doesn't really count, though. I don't know, it's just, it's good. It's... <sighs> you caught me off guard. I don't know what to say after that. What was the question? Something about was like... Oh, perhaps he just stayed a little too long at the reggae concert. That's our Phil Locke. Uh, the guy is beautiful, I'll tell you the truth. Yeah. What a character. He is out there and everybody loves him. All right. Right now, first place going to take home 613,000 as we have five players battling for this championship. What is it? But back to the table, Dan with a quick fold. Over to Jordan. Jordan Christos, the 26 year old pro. Looks down at a pair of queens, the ladies. What a hand to get at this moment. And he makes it 350 to go. Yeah, he's got the Unabomber sweatshirt on himself here a little bit. Alex out. And now Phil Locke oh, with an ace eight. Uh, don't get into trouble here. Oh, boy. Oh, he's going to do it. Holy guacamole. All in for $3.7 million here. Call. Jordan has more chips than he does. Makes a snap call. Give me cover. And right now, Phil Locke knows he is up against it. Well, he has plunged ahead. Little did he know that Jordan has the queen. This has got to be close to right, right? No, it's too aggressive. I'm surprised at this play by Phil Locke. He took a three bet to 700,000 if the guy moves in. Throwing his hand away and still had three million left, which is more than two guys at the table here. But right now, he is all in for a monster pot up against two queens with just an ace-eight offsuit. A well, possible error by Phil, but you never know. He's a dog, and the flop comes up 7-6-4. So he's got an inside straight draw now, or the ace, of course. Right now, Jordan out in front with the ladies. Well, that's Phil's girlfriend over there, Jennifer Tilly, quite a player herself, along with Perlod Friedman, his buddy, who's a former winner of this tournament. Trying to root him in here. Oh, wow. Another queen. Three queens for Jordan. The Unabomber really needs the miracle. Well, they must catch a five on the river to make it straight. Nothing else will do. WPT champion Phil Locke in loads of trouble. He is circling the drain at this moment. And the river card is a three of clubs. Well, Vance just overplayed his hand. I'm sure he'll be the first one to tell you. Hold on, buddy. This wasn't meant to be for Phil tonight. Out in fifth place. Devastation for Phil Locke. He's packing it up. I should have made it like a million or something. Yeah. So Phil Locke out of here in fifth place. Going to take home 109,000. And his personality. He's always fun to watch. Let's go see what he has to say. As much as I'm married to the idea of just play well, do your best, whatever, yeah, you get close and you're like, oh, well, you can start smelling. You can smell the blood, you know? So, yeah, I smelt it a little, but it didn't happen. That's all good, you know? I've got friends, family, and I got a 105 lump in. I did two bullets, that's uh, like around 7,500, and I made 105 something. So they want to make the walk of shame even tougher. Hey, it's been a while since we've talked to you, yeah? <laughs> I like it. I like it, you know? You got a job as a poker player. Come on in, you know. Well, he's always smiling. You gotta love his attitude, Vince. Win, lose, or draw. The guy is always happy-go-lucky. And right now, Jordan Christos way out in front with nine million in chips. Here we go. Four players remain. Action on Jordan. And Jordan's gonna take a look down at a queen nine offsuit. 
He's got the rush going here right now. Yeah, he's also got the chip lead, which means he can bully guys around, and he's going to do it right here, raising it to 300,000. Right next to him, Alex Masick, the poker pro, has a law degree from San Diego Law School. Well, right now, Alex is on the short stack, but opts not to play the ace high here. Ryan also out, and Dan can't compete, so Jordan Christos with just queen nine, gonna bully his way through that pot. The WPT has a rich history of showcasing emerging poker talent. And this season, we turn our attention to a fresh batch of players who have what it takes to light up the poker scene. Let's meet our new ones to watch. We're the ones to watch. I'm the guy, if you need something, I got it. Ladies love money too, you know? <laughs> Sometimes things go your way. I'm kind of the life of the party anywhere I go. WPT. Poker is everything to me. It's my passion. It's the thing that I was meant to do. Hope we got a shot at this. Poker, it's life, man. Probably the best job ever. You're just giving me chips. I love that I'm my own boss, and I think poker can give me everything I want, a house, and hopefully take care of my family. It's a very fun game. It stimulates the mind, it gives me some freedom, it allows me to travel. It's New York, Montreal, or London, then afterwards, see you guys in Paris. Pretty blessed. Yeah, I'm a lucky man, for sure. At the end of the day, I think that's what's most important in life is being able to do what you want and what you love. And poker allows me to do that. I'm excited and I'm playing really well and I feel good. So it uh, should be a fun season. Everything I'd ever done in my entire life just kind of groomed me to be in a place when I found poker. It just felt really, really right when I sat down for the first time. And I don't know, I never looked back. I feel honored that you chose me to be a once to watch. It's fun to be one, but uh, I'm not sure. Why did you choose me as a one to watch? Maybe it's my name, it's really long and fun to say. I'm always there, I'm always ready, and I'm always looking to have a good time. I like to think I have a good sense of humor and, and just kind of bring the energy up for everyone. Probably my personality and my swagger, you guys pick me to be ones to watch. I think I'm the most entertaining player in poker right now. I ain't folding I think I'm a one to watch because I'm feisty. I'm kind of the life of party anywhere I go. I'm a little crazy. I'm actually very shy, so there's be a lot of times you'll see me at the poker table and I'm not exactly what everybody wants to see because I'm really just focusing in and, and trying to win. The whole cast of this Ones to Watch, it's a great cast. You have great personalities, great players. You've got characters, you've got swag. It's gotta be the best cast that, that I've seen on the World Poker Tour. Well, Vince, we got a good group of Ones to Watch this season on the World Poker Tour. Yes, we do, but right now we have four players Battling for this championship at the Legends of Poker. This is the event that Doyle Brunson was our champion a few years back. Who will it be tonight? Now, well, action's on Alex Masick. He goes out. Former chip leader Ryan Goen do with an ace eight. Now, well, this hand was the demise of Phil Locke. Let's see what happens to Ryan. He's going to pop it up to 300,000 to go. Dan Highmiller. Right behind with a king queen. Well, Dan's going to make the call. Wants to see a flop. And chip leader Jordan says, "I'm priced in. I'll slop around." Sure is. Eight hundred fifty thousand in the pot. Cost him one hundred fifty to make the call. So he's definitely there. Here comes the flop. Who will be lucky? No one. Ten, nine, five, all diamonds. Well, Ryan has a diamond. Good. And the check by Dan and Jordan. And Ryan not getting aggressive, not going to make the continuation bet. He checks as well. The turn card's a nine, pairs the board. And again, Dan checks. Jordan doesn't make a stab at this pot. He also checks. Now you got to think Ryan's going to push here. Protect his hand. You may think he can just check it down and have the best hand, Vince. And the river card is a jack. That makes it straight for Dan. That's why you can't check those down. Well, a million in the pot. Dan going to bet 300000 with his straight. Jordan out. Begging for a call, and Ryan scoots away. So the poker player, Dan Heimeller, taking down the pot. Former pizza guy. He is doing it here tonight. And right now, the pizza could be on him. 
Stick around to hear what Tony Dunst has to say about tonight's action in The Raw Deal when the WPT Legends of Poker continues. This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. I'm Danielle, one of the Royal Flush Girls. You're watching season 12 of the WPT. The future couldn't be any brighter for the Bicycle Casino. The hotel will be a first-class property, very upscale and elegant with a contemporary style. It will feature over 100 guest rooms, exclusive VAP open-air gaming area, restaurants, and a host of other amenities. The most important thing, we will now be able to offer a place where our guests can stay and play. Welcome back to the Bicycle Casino and the Legends of Poker, brought to you by ClubWPT.com. And Vince, how about this tournament this week? We had 716 entrants in this event. That was a very big feel, very exciting. You know, who's going to become the next legend here at the bike? But there was one player, Martin Aganov. He's from Glendale, California, and uh, he got pretty lucky here. Yeah, Martin got a chance to mix it up with all the pros on the green felt right here at the bike, all because he won his seat on clubwpt.com. Exactly, it's a great, great site. Now, he didn't make the money in this particular tournament, but he had a great time, he competed, and on top of that, he hung out with the Royal Flush Girls and had a ball. Check it out, sign up today, clubwpt.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Back to the table we go, four players competing for this championship here tonight. And the Annies are going up to 25,000. The blinds are 100 and 200,000, Mike. Getting steep. Well, indeed it is. Huh? Action going to be the, 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 Ryan Guendo. He quickly folds. And now Dan Heimiller has picked up an ace nine. In a four-handed poker game, pretty strong. He's getting out raising chips. And he's on the button. Yep, he's going to make it 5.25 to go. Into the chip leader, Jordan. And he puts back on the sunglasses, or I should say the red glasses. Jordan taking his time to peek, and he looks in a miserable hand. 8-3 of hearts. They call him JC. He's a local as well. Only 26 years old. I mean, look at all the signs we got in the crowd tonight, Vince. We've got Christos Nation out there. I've heard of Red Sox Nation and all these things, but now we got Poker Player Nations. Well, finally, he's going to fold that mess. And. Acting like he hated to let it go, that's for sure. I think I've been nuts. Alex now with a nothing hand going to fold. I had to beat. Fold as well. I don't want to lose, you lose yeah, any sleep over it. I was on my way to, but you saved me. And hi, Miller, with about 3.5 in chips. I'm taking your mojo, bro, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. More shades. Yep. It's over for you. It only works for one person. No, it would work for me. It just means like way too much for you. We're connected. Me and these glasses are connected. Alex wanted to try on some of those red sunglasses. See if they'll work for him like they're doing for Jordan. Four players remain. We had 716 entries originally as we go down the stretch here at the Bicycle Casino. Action on Dan High Miller. He's out. Yeah, Jordan got the Doyle Brunson hand, a former champion of this event, but he opts to fold. So it's the battle of the blinds here. Alex looks down at Jack Nine of Hearts. Actually, I mean, I've looked at the payouts. I know what first place is. I don't, I don't know what the rest of the payouts are, and I don't even know what I'm guaranteed right now. I'm gonna keep my eye on first place for now. So Alex, well, he sees an opportunity here. He is going to push all in, 1.9 million. Just hoping against hope that Ryan doesn't pick up anything, but Ryan has picked up an ace high. How much? Well, even with ace deuce, no matter what your opponent has, the best you can probably be is like a $1.50 favorite. Because he's gonna have two middle cards somewhere, at least. He's got an ace, you're dominated. But Mike, he is gonna call and he loves it. Well, Alex can't swallow a BB right now. Ace, ace, ace. He's got a jack nine. Ace. We need an ace. Ryan, go and do it. High fiving anyone that'll touch him. Alex is saying, What did I do? First card I looked down at, deuce. And I'm like, 
fucked up. I'm gonna have to fold. Then I see an eighth. I'm like, I have no choice. Ryan liking his position. He's a favorite going into the flop. Here we go. Jack six four. So right on the flop. Ryan shakes his head as his opponent flops a pair of jacks. Bingo bango. Ryan looking for a bongo, meaning an ace. Yeah, well, yep, he needs to get lucky now. Alex in front, but an ace oh, appears! There it is, an ace right on the turn. Oh, come on, Ryan! <laughs> Ryan go into, looks like his stack is gonna go into right up. <laughs> what a catch on the turn. Well, Alex knows he has to catch a jack or a nine on the river to stay alive in this tournament. No, oh, he's stunned. Can he do it? No, it's a five of diamonds. So just like that, the 28-year-old Alex Masick out in fourth place. Yeah, man. Vince, when I watched this tournament from a couple tables down to the final table, Alex was the general. He was in command, raised nearly every pot. At this final table, it didn't happen. I'll see you next one. Finally moved all them a jack nine of hearts and ends up going out in fourth place. Um, it was a great experience. Um, I feel like I gained a lot of confidence playing in this field, and I definitely felt like it was a you know great tournament to play in. So hopefully I'll be playing a lot more this season. So with Alex Masic out in fourth place, who will take down the prestigious Legends of Poker title? We'll be right back with more action from the Bicycle Casino on the WPT. You have like 9.3-ish. Are you doing some math over there? What the hell is going on? Oh, and I was counting 9.3 million. I know, you got like a pen and paper and everything. Yeah, writing down stack sizes. Looking for something special? Go to WPTFoundation.org and check out the amazing auction items up for grabs. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're at the Legends of Poker in Los Angeles. There are the beautiful freeways of Southern California. Well, they're beautiful to your ottoman rush hour. <laughs> Lots of gridlock perhaps out there. There's also some gridlock going on here inside the casino as three players remain. Ryan going to has now taken the lead after winning that last pot. He's got 9.2 million. Jordan Christos in second place with 8.8 .8 million. And right now, Dan Highmiller with 3.3 .3 million. Let's go to the felt. The antis are 25,000. Blinds are one and 200. Big hand for Jordan Christos. Ace queen with the button. 26 year old's gotta love this. He's gonna pop it up to 525. Ryan going out. And Dan Heimela with just a queen deuce also can't play. So a quick win there for Jordan Christos, the drummer, the poker player, the guy that quit college to play poker, takes down that pot. Well, that puts him and Ryan about tied for the lead right now. Well, speaking of Ryan. He looks down at the ace four off suit here. He's gonna raise it, make it 425,000 to go. But Dan right behind him with an ace eight. Pretty solid starting hand in a three-handed poker game. Now he looks over at both his opponents. Sees they both got about three times as many chips as he does. All in. And he's going for it right here. Moves all in with the ace eight off suit. Great instincts by Dan Heimiller, the 51-year-old. A big reputation around the poker circuit for years. Well, Jordan goes out. Can I? I don't know how much chips I have. Actually, never mind. I'll figure it out. <laughs> Three, seven. Just don't want to double up a guy like Dan Heimiller. <clears throat> Wow. Oh boy, he's put the chips out there. Wow. What a gamble by Ryan. I don't like this call for another $2.7 million. He doesn't like it either, as you can see. Yeah, you got his feet. I think it's three handed. That's okay. He could have been dominated like he is. His opponent could have had two sixes, two fives. He can't believe he made that call. He's kicking himself. He's going to have to get lucky in an eight right on the flop. Dan Heimiller clapping his hands together. Very happy with that flop, and why not? To win the pot, his opponent's got to hit two runners in a row. Two eight, fours, four, eight, six, seven. Eight, eight. And Ryan is a sickened puppy right now. He is destroyed by this, but he could still possibly have the long shot luck. No, 10 of clubs, pairs the board. If an ace comes off, they would split this pot. Hey, ace and chomp. Ryan begging for the long shot. Cocktails. 
<laughs> Dan, so happy, elated, as we go down to the river. Well, it's a deuce. Dan is gonna double up. Well, it sure has, Vince. And what a crazy ride it's been for him. Looking at the WPT stack tracker, you can see Dan's been playing steady poker after starting this final table in sixth chip position. Dan is now in second place. He has surpassed tonight's starting chip leader, Ryan Goendu. But Mike, you have to say our biggest story of the night is the current chip leader, Jordan Christos, who absolutely exploded into the lead when he eliminated Phil Locke in fifth place. Let's get back to the table where the action is back on Dan. And he has got a big one here, ace king. He just doubled up the last hand. Now he looks down at this premium man. He is feeling good right now. Jordan, our chip leader, folds his hand. Now Ryan looks down at a pair of fives. What do you do now? You just doubled this guy up a second ago. Now he's raised it, and you pick up a pair of fives. Well, that's the kind of hand you get super aggressive with sometimes. All in. Well, there it is. Call. Yeah, he's shoved, and he's being called quickly. Well, it's a race situation, the under pair versus the over cards. And a massive race situation. I'm on tilt. Whoever Five. wins, it's going to be the chip leader. Five. Wow. Five. Focus, people. Well, Ryan says, I'm on tilt. And we will see. Here comes the flop. Oh, boy. Ace and the king right on the flop. Dan Heimiller. High five in his fan. It's not over. Ryan can catch a five. Two runners to make a straight or two runners to make a flush. What a flop for High Miller! Out in front with top two pair. Is Kentucky Fried Chicken still open? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this could be Dad's lucky day, but he's got to dodge some things. And it's a heart. So now Ryan has four hearts. One more heart. One more heart. One more of these. A heart. Oh boy! Well, Dan can't believe it. His opponent had two outs just one second ago. Now he's got multiple outs to win this pot. Any heart but the ace of hearts will win the pot for him, as well as a five. Everybody on their feet here at the Bicycle Casino. What drama on the World Poker Tour to kick off season 12. Well, can our local Ryan get lucky on the river? Here it comes. Four diamonds. Dan Miller clapping. He is playing heads up for this title, and he's the chip leader, Vince. Incredible. Ryan going to out in third place, and this local is going to take home 233,000. Well, Vince, Ryan going to held the chip lead for a long time at this final table. And just like that, going to is going home. Oh, it's very exciting. Cameras, lights, all the crowd, a lot of excitement, a lot of energy. It was, it was fun, for sure. I wish I'd, I'd won that race, though, but hey, it happens. With Ryan going to out in third place, it's now down to Jordan Christos and Dan Heimler to battle for the title. Heads up action from the Legends of Poker is coming up next on the WPT. There are 100,000 reasons to love ClubWPT.com because as a Club WPT VIP, you get the chance to win a share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, where we are down to our final two players. While the Royal Flush girls, Danielle and Brittany, bring out the money that these guys are playing for, let's see what Jordan and Dan had to say on the break. Jordan, you've been preparing for this moment all of your life. How are your emotions coming into Heads Up? Non-existent. <laughs> really? To be honest, yeah. They have been almost the whole tournament. I'm just focused on what I have to do on the stack sizes, and you know, I'll worry about that afterwards. But you know, just tucking it away and focusing on the game. Well, your performance has been excellent. Best of luck. Thanks. Appreciate it. Dan, you came into this final table as a short stack. Now here you are, heads up. Did you think that when you started today that you would make it this far? No way. No? No. I thought it would be less than 50% chance that I could get to uh, fourth place, much less heads up with a chip lead. So it's just, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, unbelievable. Unbelievable luck. I bet. Well, I'm sure you're already feeling like a winner. Very best of luck. Thank you very much. <laughs> 
The WPT Champions Cup is ready to have a new legend's name added to it. So let's get back to the call of the game with Mike and Vince. Well, thank you, Lynn. And right now, Dan Heimiller, the 51-year-old local out of L.A., 13,500,000. Jordan Christos, the 26-year-old, with about 7,8. Here we go. Call by Jordan, no raise. And Dan wants to see a flop. Here we go, two junk hands, a7-4. Dan has picked up sevens. Well, he's going to check them. Dan very good at throwing his opponent rope. Jordan is going to bet 300,000. No way Dan's going to put him on an ace because he didn't raise before the flop, so I don't see Dan going anywhere. Oh, no, he's going to re-raise, going to trap his guy. I don't like Dan Heimiller. He made a comment to me on the final table bubble last night. I was took five seconds or more every hand to make a decision. I expected more from Dan Heimiller in terms of poker etiquette, being a veteran of the game. He's going to be the first one out. Wow. Well, with seven players last night, they had a little run in, it sounds like, Vince. And Jordan hadn't forgot it. That's obvious. No, he was wishing him that he got knocked out, but that's not the B. Right now, Dan's the chip leader. And there's a little drama going on here between these two guys. Well, it sure is. There you see the prize money, what they're playing for. Winner <laughs> over 613000 plus that coveted WPT title. Name engraved on the WPT Champions Cup. And look at this. Heimiller's picked up two aces. He's got a two-to-one chip lead. Picks up the aces, the weapons of mass destruction in a heads-up battle. And look at this. He's just going to call it. Well, he limps in intelligently because Jordan only has a 10-3. Here's the flop. It's a 5-4 deuce. So now Jordan has an open-ended straight. Action on Jordan. Well, he's going to check, and I'm going to reach for chips, and now thinking... Check. Wow. Damn, he checked two aces there. Surprised at that play. Just doesn't want to lose his man. Nine, Nine of spades eight. on the turn. Dan doing anything and everything just to keep his guy around. It's better to lose your man than lose the pot. Yeah, but he's still pretty strong with aces and a straight draw potential. And look at this. He's going to get a little money here. Jordan's going to bet 275. And here comes the raise by Dan. Yeah, this is the time to step it up. Dan Heimiller's been playing poker 15 years longer than Jordan has been alive. What's interesting is Dan used to be a pizza delivery man, and of course, Jordan was a, a pizza delivery boy. The first time in the history of the tour, the two pizza delivery guys are fighting it out That's for a right. WPT title. That's right. You gotta love it. And the pizza guys are playing for big dough. <laughs> Sorry, I had to say it. And Jordan's gonna make the good lay down. And so Dan Heimeller, everything going right for him right now as he takes down that pot. Things are going his way right now. Dan with 14.3 million. Jordan, the 26-year-old, with 7 million. And as we go down the stretch here at the Bicycle Casino, right back at Jordan. And he's a little bitter about the way he perceived Dan to treat him last night. And he wants to get back at his man. Going to raise it here with a queen five offsuit, but High Miller has him out card again. Three bets it to 1.1 million, and that's probably going to do it for Jordan here. He just wants to punish this youngster. All in. Oh, but maybe not. Wow. Look at this move. An all in bet. You can't push around this young guy. How many, how many millions do you have of about? What do you think? Is it, is it, I, can, I guess I can take a look at your stacks. See, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. A little under seven. And still got a big chip lead if he folds. And Dan does the right thing. Lays down his hand. Jordan shows him the bluff. Jordan with a little salt in the wound, Mike. Well, look at Dan Heimiller. He's shaking his head, just can't believe it. The guy moving his last chip to the queen five, but he did. We're back. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see if Dan Hamiller goes on tilt after she getting shown that bluff. That's the reason you show it to him. You hope he'll tilt off a little bit. Let's see if it happens. So Jordan is saying, that's for last night, Mr. Heimiller. You rushed me. That's for last night. Stay tuned. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour.
going to raise it to 600,000. And Jordan's going to have a nice ace queen of diamonds. It's going to be very nice because he's going to play this hand. You can bet on that. I love it. Before the break, we saw Jordan bluffing with a queen height, and he showed Dan. Well, Dan's a longtime veteran poker player. Things like that are not supposed to bother him at the table. Well, Jordan has re-raised. He's going to 1.6 million. That's right. Let's go. 1.6. And Dan will lay it down. Yep, has to give it up there. Things are turning in the young man's way, perhaps. Well, you still got your opponent three to two in chips. You're in good shape. No sense in doing anything silly. All right, but the blinds are going up to 125, 250 now. Right back on Jordan. He's got a jack. Oh, wow, jack ace. Well, big hand playing heads up. Jordan likes it. And he's going to raise. Yeah, 575, Dan. With a nothing hand, just a 3 5. Well, Vance, just seems like. He's playing pots now because he wants to get his money back from that bluff a minute ago. Well, he's caught a three, but the ace also hits for Jordan. It's top pair for Jordan, bottom pair for Dan. He checks, and Jordan reaching for betting chips. Yeah, 675. Oh, and Dan doesn't believe him. Well, a snap call by Dan here with bottom pair. Going in deep here to the turn we go. Ada Hart comes off. That doesn't change things. Dan's going to check again. And the bet you expect. 1.6 this time with the aces. And Dan. Oh, look at this, Vince. Well, he's getting stubborn here. Well, he sure is. You just wonder if the bluff that Jordan showed him is affecting Dan Highmiller where he wants to get a bluff in and show his opponent a bluff. That's a great point. He seems to be tilting off here. Oh, boy. I don't understand this. Double fisted. Yeah, he is going to raise with just the threes. Oh, and you really going to go away with that? He's going to go all in. Well, he's saying if you can beat this, good luck to you. Dan cannot beat it. He's caught with his hand in the cookie jar, Vince. Jordan read him perfectly on this hand. And Vince, I believe that by showing Dan Highmiller that bluff a moment ago, it has put Highmiller on tilt. Okay, this time Jordan shows the aces. He was out in front. During the hand, they should be talking so much. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. It's too much. It's, it's way too much. I mean, there's talking. We're trying to play poker. Dan perturbed. It's ridiculous. But Somewhere the crowd else. was on his back there. Well, Vance, he should be angry at himself, not the crowd, that's for sure. You can't push this young 26-year-old drummer out of the way. He is now taking the chip lead. Bay 101 was my first shot at life-changing money. I had 140 big blinds with 27 players left and somehow managed to get 18. My worst nightmare came true, and every day in this tournament, I was thinking about the mistakes I made before and just not making those same mistakes, just learning from it and doing everything right. Today, I'm going to do it. The tension is rising as we get closer to crowning a new WPT champion. But right now, let's break down tonight's action with Tony Dunst in this edition of The Raw Deal. If you're hoping to achieve success in major live tournaments like the WPT, then you're going to need to combine sound strategy with mental fortitude. It's much easier to make the optimal decision when there's not life-changing money on the line and screaming friends in the stands. And while Jordan Christos is no amateur, this final table will be the first six-figure score of his career. Meanwhile, Dan Heimiller has cashed in a live tournament every year since 1992, in the television era of Steve Urkel. So will it be the freshman Jordan Christos or the veteran Dan Heimiller who cracks under the pressure? Let's break it down. We'll take a closer look at a hand that begins with Jordan raising the button with ace jack and Dan making a pretty loose call out of the big blind with 5-3 offsuit. Both players make a pair on the 7-ace-3 flop, which also gives Dan a backdoor straight and flush draw. But it's on the turn where things get interesting. 
When Dan checks on the eight of hearts, Jordan follows through with a bet of 1.6 million. I think most people in Dan's spot would fold at this point, though perhaps some sticky players would call again with bottom pair. But Dan decides for door number three and check raises to 3.6 million. I still don't like his bluff for three reasons. One, Jordan probably isn't betting this turn very wide with bluffs and weak hands. Two, in the event Jordan has a hand as strong as top pair, it's unlikely he'll fold to the turn raise on a texture with so many draw possibilities. And three, Jordan could have a strong combination draw himself and may end up shoving the turn as a semi-bluff. But Dan still has a little fold equity if Jordan shoves the turn, even though Dan's getting a great price. As it turns out, the price didn't matter because Dan was never calling with his hand. Calling. After Jordan moves in and Dan fails to call, the crowd barrages him with taunts before he even folds his hand. And while Dan handles losing the chip lead in stride, he can't help but stare at the chips he bluffed away and wonder, did I do that? Well, Tony's right about that hand, and I'm sure Dan feels the same way. Jordan now with 17.6 million. Dan down to 3.8. What a turnaround we're seeing. Blinds are 150 and 300, $50,000 Andy. And all in. Look at this. He's going to go all in with King High. Let's take a look at Jordan's cards. Oh, boy. Call. He's got an ace nine of hearts and a quick call by Jordan, of course. Well, Jordan well out in front here with the ace nine. About a two to one favorite to win this pot and take this title right here, right now. The Christos Nation all excited. They know their man could win it right here. Well, man, so far, and this heads up badly. Play Dan Heimiller like a snare drum. I can tell you that. But it's not over. Five cards to come for Dan Heimiller's poker destiny as well as Jordan's ace nine up against king four. And a nine hits on the flop. That is good for Jordan out in front with the nines. His parents and friends celebrate. Well, Dan's going to have to catch a king to take the lead. Two runners to make a straight or two running fours. Otherwise, he's going to be our runner up in this tournament. The crowd is chanting ace. They want to wrap this up in Hollywood. It could happen. Let's see the turn card. It's a queen. Now he's got straight possibilities. Dan I. Miller needs a king or a jack, which would give him a king eye straight to win this pot to stay alive. Otherwise, the former pizza delivery boy, the drummer, the man that quit college, the player on the poker circuit, that is Jordan Christos, who will become our champion. Here he comes. Six of spade on the river. Jordan has taken his title. Only 26 years old from Palmdale, California. Jordan Christos is our champion. And the Christos Nation comes out of the stands. Everybody happy in the Christos Nation. He is in the mosh pit of friends. But before we talk to him, let's talk to the great Dan Heimiller. Dan. I didn't wait long enough for good cards. I got a little impatient and, and, and attempted uh, quite a few bluffs. It didn't work. Well, here we are at the Bicycle Casino with the Legends of Poker champion for season 12, Jordan Christos. Hey, Jordan. How are you feeling right now, taking down your first WPT title? Feels awesome. Like, <laughs> This is the best feeling ever. I actually, you know, I don't know. I haven't fully absorbed it. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let you know in a few days or a week. <laughs> Jordan, in addition to all your cash you win tonight, you also get your name inscribed on the WPT Champions Cup. Once again, congratulations to our champion, Jordan Christos. <laughs> Lynn, back to you. <laughs> congratulations once again to Jordan Christos, the season 12 Legends of Poker Champion. Join us for our next stop when the WPT travels to Atlantic City for the always exciting Borgata Poker Open. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls and everyone here at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. The World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed.
Africa radar has zeroed in on the eastern seaboard and all eyes are on the Borgata, where millions are on the line and history is in the making. Tonight on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He is circling the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. It is the extreme miracle. Oh! everyone, I'm Lynn Gilmartin and welcome to the WPT's extensive coverage of the Borgata Poker Open. For the past four seasons, it has been the young East Coast pros who have torn apart the competition on their way to winning this title. Some may call it local advantage, others may call it skill, but one thing is certain, these players are all in it with a lot of heart. This season, a huge field showed up at Borgata and laid it all on the line to show that they have what it takes to become a WPT champion. The first thing you notice when arriving at Borgata is the noise. East Coast players don't hesitate to speak their minds, just like Borgata regular Travel Thomas did. And I hope the camera around to watch me crack this guy right here. As he held court at his day one A table. Never, ever, ever, ever blow. No, 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 not against the team, Meister. That's how you win a hand in America. I'm trying to educate America. I'm gonna start charging for this education. This guy beat me so bad that I want to take a nap. It's important for players to keep focused, just like Kong Pham, sitting to Travel's left, who didn't let the banter <laughs> rattle him as he quietly won pot after pot. Don't not put me on the table with this guy tomorrow. Day 1A also saw the arrival of some new members of season 12's Ones to Watch. Chicago's own Aaron Never Miss Massey, and fresh off winning a World Series of Poker bracelet, Lonnie Harwood. A late start was followed by an early elimination for Kara Scott. I have already busted out of day 1A. I only saw four hands. I think four hands and busting in four hands has got to be a record for me. And although he was too busy winning a preliminary event here at Borgata to buy in earlier, season 11 WPT Player of the Year, Matt Salzberg, finally entered the tournament temporarily. Hustler knocked me out. How embarrassing is that? He uh, six out in the on the river, so I will be buying in tomorrow, as, as is my custom. Poker pro Vanessa Selbst found herself sitting next to a familiar player, her season six WPT Ladies Championship opponent, Nancy Todd. It's the first time she folded. Maybe I should have called. I had one of her fours. So we can trash talk. Oh, you can trash talk. It wouldn't bother me. I think we both get that, like, you know, it's a long time ago and stuff happens at the poker table, it gets heated sometimes, but, you know, things have changed a lot and yeah, we're totally doing good. The eliminations were racking up and with the day drawing to a close, players were fighting for pots because in addition to moving on to day two, a cash bonus would be awarded to the top two finishers of each day one for their performances. When players began counting up their chips, it was Kong Pham who sat atop the pile with over 191,000 in chips, and he was rewarded $5,000 for his efforts. Other notable finishers included defending champion Ben Hamnett, the always tough Vanessa Selbst, and fresh off his Legends of Poker victory, Jordan Christos. Of the 376 players that registered for day 1A, 166 would return for day two. Players who were eliminated would have a chance to re-enter the event on day 1B. Day 1B brought a new crop of players to Borgata, as well as some repeat visitors taking their second chance after busting the previous day. The field included a poker veteran, actor James Woods. You want me to act? It's a general poker that is very upset. You're, you're looking at one. <laughs> There's no acting involved. Along with a rookie player who had bought into his first WPT tournament, WPT founder Steve Lipscomb. Steve spoke with Royal Flush Girl Angelique about the experience. How many times have you played in this tournament already? All right, so I have never played in a World Poker Tour event that had a buy-in. The Invitational, okay. I was uh, very nice enough to invite myself every year to come How and play. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'm a good guy that way. But this is the first time I've been in a buy-in event, and I gotta tell you, it's really awesome. I hope I at least make it today too. Day 1B also brought the arrival of our final season 12 one to watch, Danny Miami boss Seward. Did you get my amazing eyebrows in the picture? They're the best eyebrows in the building. 
While Danny was ready for his close-up, another one to watch, Jeff Gross, was sent to the rail. I feel a little, uh, the ones to watch, curse gone so far, two for two and brutal, brutal ways of losing on the river and annoying spots. When registration finally closed, the official prize pool information was released. Total entrance reached 1,189, eclipsing season 11's tally. The massive turnout created a total prize pool of over $3.8 million, with first place taking home over $825,000. Ace, king of hearts for us, aces and kings. Slap the nut flush, yes! And with that, we were introduced to Long Island native Norberto Camacho, who graciously provided his own play-by-play. -play. It's cute like you, babe, don't worry. If I had an aim, it wouldn't be me. I have an aim. Also heating up, albeit a little more quietly, was season 10 ones to watch, Ebony Kenny. Ebony, who had busted out the previous day, was making the most of her second chance. Day 1B came to a close with 425 players still in the hunt, including WPT World Champion Scott Seaver and Season 11 Player of the Year Matt Salzberg. Staten Island local Anthony Castelli finished second in chips, receiving a $3,500 cash bonus. But it was Paul Volpe who would pocket an extra five grand in cash for taking the chip lead into Day 2. It's day two, that's when I usually shine. Let's go, baby. WPT. As the nearly 600 players took their seats on day two, they still had a long road ahead of them to reach the final table and add their name to the WPT Champions Cup. He's a billionaire, this guy. Somehow, the two biggest trash talkers in the room, Norberto Camacho and Will Fayola, drew seats next to each other. And they didn't disappoint. You got outplayed. No, no, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Believe me, I get it. Yeah, I'm going to get it. Don't worry. You could try to come get it, but I doubt that. I promise you, I'm going to I guarantee you, I'm going to stack you in the next three, four, four, five hands. Guaranteed. Wow. After starting the day with a healthy stack, Ebony Kenny was having a little trouble gaining traction. I'm hanging in there, so I'm happy. I was down to like 45k, so I'm happy. I'm at like 120, I think. I'm very, very happy. I'm all in. All in. With players fighting for pots and eliminations piling up, next year, a man they call Lucky, Edwin Torres, was living up to his nickname. Dominated by his opponent's ace king, Edwin caught a miracle five on the river to double up. I'm just enjoying life every month. I might not be It beats being a farmer. A blueberry farmer by day, the soft-spoken Edwin was soon building up a huge stack. Day two saw the end of the line for season 12 ones to watch Aaron Massey, Danny Seward and Lonnie Harwood. The only remaining one to watch in the field was Christina Lindley, who was looking to double up. Ready to run it up, got a good reship stack, so <laughs> looking forward to doing that. And although we were no longer watching Aaron Massey, he was still watching his brother Ralph, who was still alive. I'm out, showers. Came back up here to check out my brother. He's still in, he's doing good. Uh, so I'm back to, back to the hotel room for me to, to sulk for a little bit. The day ended with 174 players still in the hunt for this WPT title. And former tennis pro Raj Borja was leading the way. Blueberry farmer Edwin Torres harvested a big stack good for third place. And after a slow start, Ebony Kenny rode the wave to fourth on the leaderboard. But a tenacious field still remained, including Season 10 Borgata Poker Open champ Bobby Abudi, all looking for a slice of poker glory at Borgata. Everything went right today. As play got underway on day three, the field was still 62 eliminations away from the money bubble. Players settled in for the road ahead, hoping to avoid becoming one of the unfortunate few who had fought this long but leave empty-handed. Aaron's brother Ralph was hoping to keep the Massey name alive. Feeling good, feeling confident. Aaron, it's for you. The remaining one to watch in the field was Christina Lindley, who was also celebrating her birthday. It remained to be seen if it would translate into good fortune for the Nashville native. Although Ralph Massey busted before the money, there were two other brothers in the field quietly building up their stacks. Season 11 Five Diamond finalist Jeremy Kotler and his brother Zachary. With the money bubble approaching, the cards were not kind to the ladies. Woo! As it marked the end of the road for online pro D-Moon girl Danielle Anderson 
and Cherish Andrews, who had made a deep run in this event last season. With short stack players trying to squeeze their way into the money, a pot was brewing between two big stacks. After getting all the money in on the turn, Josh Levkov was stunned to see his set of jacks fall to the straight of his opponent, Daniel Howe. Josh left short of cashing, but the remaining 110 players would take home a minimum $7,123 for their efforts. With the money bubble burst, the players loosened up and the bust outs came quickly. A number of familiar faces hit the rail. And Christina Lindley's birthday run good ran out when she could not improve in a hand against Vanessa Selbst. Her 49th place finish was worth nearly $11,000 and marked the first cash for a season 12 one to watch. On to the next one and I'm happy to cash on my birthday. I'll be in Paris, so hopefully I'll make a deep run. Reigning player of the year Matt Salzberg's tournament life was on the line when he went all in with Ace-5 and was called by the Ace Queen of North Carolina native Eric Fields. Both players hit their kicker on the flop, but Matt failed to improve on the turn and river and was sent to the hashtag showers. <laughs> Joining Matt at the payout desk was a disappointed Ebony Kenny and overall day one chip leader Paul Volpe. With big names falling, Noberto Camacho was not lacking in confidence. Today is like a really flawless day. At the end of the day, 36 players still remained and would return to play day four. Day 1A chip leader Kong Pham had regained the lead with over 2.5 million. Vanessa Selps with over 1.7 million in chips, good for fifth place. And the Kotler brothers, who looked to become the first pair of siblings to make a WPT final table. It's survival of the fittest here at the Borgata Poker Open. Find out who makes it to the final table when we return on the WPT. Season 12 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of $100,000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. Welcome back to Atlantic City, where the World Poker Tour's coverage of the playdown to the Borgata Poker Open final table continues. Day four saw the final 36 players settled into an intimate corner of the poker room to battle for a seat at the televised WPT final table. The atmosphere in the room was noticeably different from the previous days, with quiet focus taking over the field. Play got off to a rough start for blueberry farmer Edwin Torres, whose luck ended when he ran his pocket sixes into the pocket aces of Kong Pham. Back to the farm, do my farm work. Rhode Island native Anthony Zeno ended poker pro Matt Glance's deep run when he eliminated him in 23rd place. Anthony, like Vanessa Selbst, had gone to law school and passed the bar exam, but decided to pursue poker instead. But it was Kong Pham dealing out the poker justice as he won pot after pot, busting young pro Jake Schwartz in 21st place while building a monster stack throughout the day. Well, that was dramatic. With so much at stake at this late stage in the tournament, Royal Flush Girl Tuba caught up with brothers Zach and Jeremy Kotler. So I just want to know between the two brothers, right. which one is the better player? I don't know, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. So do you guys kind of keep an eye on each other, watch what's going on and check between the hands? Yeah, of course. I mean, we're, we're trying to set history yeah, here. Not, not while we're in the hand, <laughs> but afterwards we look at each other. Perfect. Zach was trying to make the most of his short stack when he went all in with King Queen, but he was called by the ace king of Eric Fields. After a 10 high flop, Zach was looking for a queen or running cards to save him. No help on the turn and the river sent Zach to the rail. Yeah. Where his first thoughts were on the sibling rivalry he had with his brother Jeremy. Yeah, it lasted me, so that's a little stinger. <laughs> Would have liked to be in the final table with him. And after an impressive run in which he was never at a loss for words. I need to send you packing. Let's go. Get it all in with me right now. Let's go. Norberto Camacho was eliminated in 14th place. The usually talkative Norberto had a hard time putting it all in perspective. So, uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Legends of Poker runner-up Dan Highmiller would be the next to fall in 13th place. Okay, 
And when Kong Pham eliminated young pro Alex Rocker in 11th place, it sent his chip count north of 10 million, and the final 10 players combined to one table. Vanessa Selbst was sitting second in chips to Kong, but she narrowed the gap when she eliminated Cliff Josephy in 9th place and Richard Tatalovich in 8th place leaving us just one player away from the final six. It was late into the night when Jeremy Kotler called Daniel Howes all in. Daniel was at risk and his ace king was behind the pocket kings of Jeremy. No help on the board, knocked Daniel out in seventh place. And the Borgata Poker Open final table was set. Back, got another shot at it, absolutely, very excited. Kong Pham would lead the way, followed by two lawyers turned poker pros Vanessa Selbst and Anthony Zeno. Jeremy would make his second WPT final table and rounding out the table were two young pros, David Randall and Eric Fields. Making your way through a field of nearly 1,200 entrants has got to be draining both physically and mentally. So I can only imagine the level of fatigue setting in for our final six players. But the journey is far from over in this quest for a place on the WPT Champions Cup. For more analysis on tonight's play, we turn to WPT's very own Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten. Now, Mike. Superstar Vanessa Selbst definitely has the most experience in the spotlight of the remaining players. How do you rate her chances here tonight? Well, Len, make no mistake about it. Vanessa Selbst is a poker superstar, and I really like her chances tonight. Here's why. She's got $7.5 million in career earnings. Nobody else at the table has 800000 She's also starting out in good chip position tonight, starting in second place. Now, I think Vanessa is going to win tonight and become the first woman in history to ever win a WPT open event, meaning a buy-in event. Wow. And Vince, who do you think is going to give Vanessa the most trouble at the table? Well, Lynn, in poker, you really have to follow the money. So let's go to seat number six. And sitting there is Kong Pham, 29 years old, out of Vietnam. His first ever final table. He's very aggressive. And you know what? They call him King Kong. That's his nickname. And I believe King Kong tonight will jump over the Empire State Building, probably get the girl, and probably take home this title. <laughs> Thanks, guys. And just before the players took their seats, we had a chance to check in with Vanessa. You know, I got to play smart, play well. I've been playing well all tournament. I feel really good about my game. Obviously, I have to get lucky, get some good cards, avoid some bad beats. Um, but just hopefully just keep doing what I've been doing and hopefully take it down. The Borgata Poker Open final table is about to get started. So I'll throw it back to Mike and Vince for the call of the action. All right, thank you, Lynn. And he's going to be 10,000. Blinds are 50 and 100,000. Okay, there you see the chip count. Kong Pham out in front. Behind him, Vanessa Selps, and that's what they're playing for. The winner going to take home over $825,000. The cards are flying around the table. We are getting started. And first to play is Anthony Zeno. Anthony, 32-year-old pro out of Cranston, Rhode Island. He will not play. Vanessa Selps quickly going out. David Randall not going to play. And now we're on to Jeremy Cutler with the button and a miserable-looking 7-4 of diamonds. Yeah, looks like he's going to make a button raise here. It makes it 225000 to go. Right behind him, though, Kong Pham, the chip leader with ace three, has made the call. And look at this, Eric Fields with a big hand. Lots of people have a certain playing style and they just want to go with that and be one player. But that's not really a winning strategy in my opinion. You have to be able to adapt to different players, different stack sizes, and different situations. Hold on. Well, Eric starting out in sixth chip position, still has over three million in chips, moving all in right here <coughs> with the ace king. It certainly does. Jeremy Kotler won't play. Kong Pham saying no moss. So first hand going to Mr. Eric Fields. Yeah, nice all-in bet by Eric there. Takes down the pot. All right, just getting started at Pagoda in Atlantic City. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to Borgata. Here it is, you know, my first event. I'm making the final table. I'm going into it with high expectations and no regrets. Poker is beautiful because it's a lot of logic balanced with the psychological factors of keeping cool. I just embrace that. I've been playing this game a long time, and I feel like I'm equipped and I'm ready to take these guys on. Make a WBT final table is everything to me. It's like a dream. 
it's amazing. There's a lot of tough competition out there, very good players, and I'm just hoping today's my day. Becoming a WPT champion would be incredible. I'm always going for the win. You don't see a lot of min caches on my resume. The title means everything to me, and I'd be extremely honored to be a member of the WPT Champions Club. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour. We're at Brigada, the land of saltwater taffy. That is Atlantic City, having a great time as six players remain. Well, there you see the graph of the chips in play. Obviously, Kong Pham has got a third of them in good shape right now with six players left. Let's go down to the money pit. David Randall, poker pro out of Columbus, Ohio. First to play, he folds his hand. Jeremy Cotler getting out of his way. Kong Pham now. Well, he's an aggressive player. Going to raise it up here with the 10 of clubs. Makes it 225 to go. Eric Fields, though, not going to go anywhere. He's making the call with a king queen. Zeno out and Vanessa now with a pair of deuces. Looks intrigued. Well, I can't imagine she's going to fold, Vince. She's probably contemplating possibly raising because she plays so aggressive. But she does just make the call. So here we go. Three way action here. Come the first three cards, and it is a king and an eight. King eight, three, two hearts. Action on Vanessa. Kong hitting eights, but checking. Kings for Eric Fields, and he's the guy with the real hand at the moment. 22 years old out of Greensboro, North Carolina. He will make the bet, 325. Vanessa out. Well, Kong didn't bet the two eights, but he's gonna call with them. Looking to get lucky against Eric Fields. Let's go to the turn. When he does get lucky, and eight hits. Three of a kind for Kong. Well, there's also three hearts out there now, though. Well, Kong is going to check. David also checked. And Eric wisely checks right behind him. And now a queen comes off. But there's four hearts out there. Neither player has a heart, of course. But Kong bets a half a million without the flush, just on the three eights. But Eric has made kings and queens here, Vince. I know. Might be a tough laydown to make here, but you don't like seeing the four hearts. Call. Oh. Now he's got to make this call. Eric well, Eric call. calls with the kings and queens. Sees he got outdrawn on the turn. Kong Fam going to take down this pot to extend his chip lead. Eight of the clubs. Wow, Eight of King clubs. Kong. Eric He's married with one daughter. Born and raised in Vietnam, now living in Naples, Florida. He's the chip leader. He's on a good roll right now. There's the Royal Flush Girl Social Bar. And you know who's at the end of the bar is the creator of the World Poker Tour, Steve Lipscomb. Well, he's been around all week, Vince. Just sort of been on a vacation here, just laying back and taking the congratulations from all the players for starting the World Poker Tour. All right. On to the next hand. Couple folds, and now Vanessa Selps with a king five of spades. Makes it 200,000 to go. Makes the men raise. David Randall will not play. Jeremy Cutler looks down at an attractive ace nine of hearts. Yeah, because he's out of position, he just calls here instead of three bets. Jeremy's a consultant, semi-professional poker player out of Cleveland, and here is the flop, he hits his nines. And Jeremy in Ohio State Buckeye. He's going to check. Nothing for Vanessa. And she checks behind him. A three of hearts on the turn. So Jeremy's got top pair, top kicker. Loves his hand after Vanessa checks on the flop. And he's going to bet. Certainly is. 375 to go. And what will Vanessa do? She's got zip and pip. Wow. Nothing there. Well, this is what makes her so tough. That's. <laughs> Ooh. Look at this. She checks the flop. She raises on the turn. No hand. No draw. I raise. Oh, wait. Wait a second. Jeremy says re-raise. Wow. Well, I can see him calling here. I am shocked that he would re-raise. Just in case she flopped a set of eights or did have the overpair. And she is stunned much. He would be in dire straits right now. But as it is, the gig is up for Vanessa here. <laughs> she has no hand and no draw and has been re-raised by Jeremy. But wait a second. Call. She, she's going to call this. Wow. Well, Vince, she's not calling because she's going to try to make a hand and win the pot. She's going to try to take the pot away from Jeremy. On the river, seven of spade comes up. Jeremy checks. 
Expect a bet here by Vanessa, but she's going to quickly check. Wow, I am stunned by this check, Vince. Essentially, she's just waving the flag, gives up the pot. I thought she'd make a bold bet at the river after calling that raise on the turn with no hand and no draw, but changed her mind. Jeremy taking down that pot. Oh, I think she was waiting for a club to come out and then make a big one. Didn't happen, so the consultant from Cleveland, Ohio, Jeremy Kotler, taking this one down. This episode of the World Poker Tour is brought to you in part by DraftKings. If you like poker and sports, then you're going to love daily fantasy sports at DraftKings. Go to DraftKings.com, enter promo code WPT, and start playing today. Welcome back to the World Poker Tour, brought to you by ClubWPT.com. You know, we're at Brigada, and we've been reminiscing about all the great shows at Brigada. The final tables have been amazing. And if you're a Club WPT VIP member, you too can access the vaults and take a look at these shows, relive them with us. Well, that's right, Vince, but that's just one of the benefits that they get by becoming a member of Club WPT. You also get to play unlimited poker, and you can win your share of over 100000 in cash and prizes every month, plus win your entries into live WPT events. WPT.com. Check it out. Sign up today. I think you'll like it. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. Let's get back to the felt. Well, there you see the chip counts of the players. Kong Pham well out in front with over 12 million in chips. He is dabbing it right now. All right. Cards being dealt first to play. Anthony Zeno. And Anthony, a poker pro, 32 years old, won't play. Vanessa also going out. Over to David Randall. He looks down at a junk hand, goes out. Jeremy Cotler now with the button. Let's take a peek at his cards. It's a queen king of hearts. Pretty attractive hand. Will raise the 200,000. Kong Pham with ace king just calls here, Vince. How do you like that? Now Eric Fields wow. with the real hand pair of jacks. Oh, boy. We're going to see some fireworks here. He's on a short stack of 1.6 million. All right. Yep, yep, he's going all in. Can't blame him for going all in here with two jacks. Certainly is. Everybody would do the same. Now Cutler is king, queen of hearts. And he's serious. He's saying, how much is it? Now it's about another 1.4 million to him. But it's 1.6 total. That's right. I call. Oh, he's going to make this call. Kong Pham now. I'm on. Owen. And he goes all in over the top. Uh, Eric can't believe it, but now Jeremy Kotler's the guy caught in the pickle here. Why are you such an animal, man? It's King Kong. Damn right he is. He called the $1.4 million bet, and now it's been re-raised all in. Well, Vince, he's in shock how Kong right, played this hand, but I don't see cool. how you can call. Oh, your money with the King Queen here. Lays it down. Kong Fam going to show his ace king. And we got a big race situation here for Eric Fields' poker life. So Eric Fields got to feel pretty good about his chances. Eric Fields, business degree from University of Alabama, would like to get a good flop, and he gets a pretty good one. Well, 975. So far, so good for Eric. He has got a chance to triple up here. Deuce. All right. Here we go with the turn. Oh, boy. Six of diamonds comes off. Interesting. So Never Kong needs an ace, a king, or any diamond to win the pot. I'll take an A. Good job, Fog. Never <laughs> an eight that's not the eight of diamonds. They would split the pot. <laughs> well, well, right uh, now it's roll tied for Eric Fields. And three out But he's got a lot of cards to three dodge and stay dodge alive. This many outs. If you had like one out, I'm dead. But this many outs, I'm, I can yeah, dodge. I'm the youngest player at the oh table, boy. staying cocky. Right, let's go to the river. Yeah. Let's see what we got. Can he stick around and double up? Down to the river we go. It's an eight. Oh, wow. Nice what oh, tough oh, luck oh, for oh. Eric Fields right there. Vince, he'd have tripled up, had over five million in chips if he wins that pot. Been right in the thick of things to take this title, but that is poker. Eric Fields drowning at the river there when the ace pops off at the river to give Kong the victory. Well, Eric Fields' fields of dreams are over right now. He'll take home $168,000. Let's go see what he has to say. It feels great. You know, my, my friends and family have been great the whole way supporting me. And, you know, it's, it's been a great ride. And unfortunately, it didn't get my way. But hopefully, uh, hopefully the next time it will. 
Down to five players, Mike. Yes, what can you say? King Kong making every move exactly right so far. He is flying through the jungle. Hasn't missed a vine yet, I can tell you that. <laughs> King Kong, Kong Pham, the 29-year-old out of Vietnam, says he takes his poker winnings and sends it back <clears throat> to the old country for his family. And he's got a big chance of winning nearly a million dollars here tonight. Kong Pham nearing half the chips in play here. All right, we've lost one now. In this hand, Anthony Zeno out. Vanessa Selps with a solid mid pair. Pair of sevens makes it 200,000 to go. David Randall with an uneventful 6 2 spoon play. Kotler getting out of their way. Kong Pham will speculate with a jack five. Well, why not, Vince? The guy is running hot, winning every pot. Let's gamble. Flop comes up ace queen eight. Well, yeah, not a good flop for Kong there, but Vanessa not happy with it either. There's three over cards out there. Goes check, check. And now an ace on the turn, pairs the board. Kong looks like he's giving this up. He's checking again. Well, Vanessa's starting to feel like her two sevens are the best hand, but this guy checks twice in a row. So she's going to bet. Kong goes out. Vanessa Selps takes down the pot. Well, Mike, as we take a quick break in the action, let's tell our viewers what's been happening on the World Poker Tour since our last televised event at the Legends of Poker. Well, Vince, the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Tampa, Florida, held a WPT regional where Scott Anderson emerged victorious and took home over $68,000 for the win. That is beautiful, Scott. Well done. And if you'd like to come out on the World Poker Tour and play one of these tournament events, go to worldpokertour.com and check out the complete tournament schedule. All right, back down to the felt at Pagata. The Annies have gone up to 20,000. Blinds are 61 20. Quick fold by Zeno. Vanessa Selps. What a talented young player she is. Wow, throws away an ace high. That's unlike Vanessa. <laughs> well, I mean, she picked up that the man on her left, David Randall's got a little mid pair, pair of eights, and he will raise with that 275. David Randall, they call him big time. 26 year old pro out of Columbus, Ohio. Codler out and now King Kong with a nothing 10 3, but he's already invested. And look at this. He's going to reinvest, makes it 625 with a junk hand. Well, Kong really thinks he's running well now. Going to raise with this hand. Back on David Randall. On. Yeah. King Kong is going to get a dose Whoa, of his own medicine he here. He says all in. An all in bet there over the top by David Randall. Says you can beat these eights. Good luck to you. I don't believe it. Kong goes out. David Randall takes down we the pot. we got pot. players playing with nothing here tonight. Bluffing the way to victories. I'm Angelique, one of the Royal Flush Girls. Stick around for more World Poker Tour. Borgata is by far the best casino on the East Coast. Playing here is just perfect for poker. It's definitely one of my favorite stops. I feel comfortable here. I really believe that Borgata is one of the best places to play poker. It's a beautiful casino. Everybody here has treated me extremely well. <laughs> I love coming here. It's a really well-run tournament, and I couldn't recommend it highly enough. Well, Vanessa's right about that. Players love coming here to Borgata, and why not? Such a beautiful property, and they do run poker tournaments. Fantastic. Five players remain, going after big dollars here tonight. And Kong Pham has over 15 million in chips. So right now, it's the King Kong Show, Vince. Actually going to Vanessa Selps, out of Brooklyn, New York. Quick fold by her. David Randall. I do hope so. Come on, give me Poker Pro will not play this. Jeremy Cutler. And he is on the button. Looks down at a 10-6 offsuit. Going to throw it away. So, battle of the blinds here. To Kong Pham. The chip leader with ace four makes it 250 to go. And now Anthony Zeno. You got king seven offsuit, and you have position on this guy, but still, you know he can raise with any two cards, so you call him with the king high, and you flop two sevens. Yep, and Kong with the fours has checked. It is a habit. You know, if I something like... Anthony, as you can see, has middle pair with top kicker and is going to bet. He bets 300,000. <laughs> okay. Kong, very good nature to the table. Going to make a, <laughs> a loose call with a little pair. Got bottom pair. And we're turning. Check. And he makes three fours on the turn. Vince, we saw him do this a little bit ago when he had two <laughs> eights. His opponent had two kings. He had three eights on the turn to win that pot. Oh boy, Kong has 
dug the hole, put the branches and the twigs over it, waiting for the sucker to fall in, and it has just happened. As you know, bets is sevens. Anthony bets 600,000. And as you can see, he's about to get check raised. And that's exactly the case. And right now, Anthony giving himself a lecture. Why did I bet these sevens? If the guy check raises me, I can't call. I have to throw my hand away, whether he's bluffing or not. Anthony Zeno went to law school, loves science and law. Says if he does well here, he's going to pay off some of his student loans. Oh, boy. I won't be able to pay them all off in case he makes this call. But he doesn't. He lays the hand down. Very wise by him, Kung Pham, with the three of a kind. Going to rake in that pot, extend the chip lead. Well, Vince, Kong Pham used to be a nail technician. And I can tell you right now, he is putting a manicure on all these players at this table. <laughs> all right, on to the next hand. A couple quick falls around to Vanessa. Vanessa, of course, went to law school at Yale. And she is going to raise this with an ace five. Makes it 250 to go. David Randall gets out of her way. And now Jeremy Kotler with the pair of nines. Well, he's in the big blind with two nines. Vanessa going to raise on the button with about any two cards. Jeremy knows it, so definitely going to three bet here, I would guess. He's going to mark an injury out of John Carroll University in Ohio. Very shrewd poker player, and he is going to re-raise. Sure he is. Bang. 7.25 to go. Jeremy, what can I say about Jeremy? He was on the short stack. Uh, I think he played it very well. He was cautious when he had to be. You know, now he's got a little bit more chips, and I think he'll probably be dangerous if he gets a stack. Oh, look at this, Vince. Vanessa is going to oh. four bet here with the ace rag and a snap all in bet by Jeremy oh. and a snap fold by Vanessa. Complete disappointment there for Vanessa Selps. She thought she could manhandle Jeremy. That's not the way it's done here. Jeremy, too tough for that. Well, that you see, Vanessa wells her emotions on her sleeves, looking all around, not happy with her play there. Five players remain here at Magata. We're coming back for more on the World Poker Tour. Keeping up with the latest news on your favorite players and tournaments can be a real grind. ClubWPT.com makes it easy with online access to poker magazines like WPT Poker. Get all the poker you want at ClubWPT.com. Welcome back to Borgata and the WPT, where five players are battling it out to beat this season's Borgata Poker Open champion. Let's send it back to Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten to check the chip counts and the call of the game. Thank you, Lynn. As you can see, Kong Pham, originally out of Vietnam, is the chip leader with over 16 million. Yeah, he is in great shape, Vance. I have almost three times as many chips as the guy in second place right now. Action on Anthony Zeno. Fold. Yep, a quick fold by Anthony. Vanessa Selps now. She is betting with nothing here tonight. With just Jack Nine, she makes it 250. Vince, what about this? Anthony and Vanessa, both graduates of law school, playing poker as a profession. David Randall out. Cotler out. Kong Pham might be more stubborn. He's already in the big blind, and he will make this call with an 8-5 of spades. I want to see a flop of that hand. Amazing the hands Vanessa plays. And the flop comes up 7-6-5. Oh, nice flop for Kong. He's got a pair and open and straight draw. Vanessa sees the danger in check, that check. situation. And a jack on the turn, Mike. Well, Vanessa's taking the lead now with two jacks. But look at Kong's hand. Open in straight draw, flush draw, and a pair. And he is going to bet 425000 Vanessa now with the top pair. Possible straight draw, too. I'm just going to call. Does not raise with the two jacks. Too many hands could beat her. Down to the river. Can Kong hit here like he's been doing all night? Nope. Ten of clubs. Check. Well, Kong quickly checks on the river. Vanessa going for the value bet with the jacks on the end. Of course she does. Well, very impressive here by Vanessa. That's 875. Good flop, good turn. Bad river. Flop, pay open and then turn, pay open and then flush or. <laughs> explaining his hand, how wonderful his possibilities were. Well, in the meantime, that means you're throwing it away when you give that dissertation. He is good natured. I'll give him that as he folds the hand. Well, Vanessa picks up a pot. She's happy to get one. There's Vanessa's 
Newlywed wife Miranda in the front row. Married earlier this year. That's right. Vanessa's done nothing but win millions since I got married. All right, Colin Fan <laughs> with the big hand picking up Ace Queen of Spades just like that. And he makes it 250 to go. Zeno out. Vanessa also not going to play. And now David. He will David. not play that mess. Yeah. Jeremy now looks at Ace King in the big blind. He's definitely going to play. 800. Yep, makes it 800,000 to go. And this could spell a lot of trouble for Kong Pham. All in. All in. He says all in. Insta call there by Jeremy Cutler. Well, Jeremy has him dominated. If he wins this pot, he'll be in second chip position. If he loses it, he's out in fifth place. Wow. A big opportunity here for Jeremy to double up. Great position here with five cards to come. King Kong usually comes out ahead tonight so far. Will he get lucky here with the queen? Not there. It's a 985 on the flop. The spirit suits. Very good flop for Jeremy. He'll dodge two runners to make a straight or a queen. Uh, the crowd on its feet right now. Well, there you saw Jeremy's brother, Zach, who finished 15th in this tournament. Great showing by him as well. And the board pairs nines. Now, if an eight or five comes off, they would split this pot. Real hard. Kong needs a queen to win the pot. King Kong, amused at this, keeps his smile. Down to the river we go. He's got over 20 million in chips prior to this pot, man, so it's easy to smile. You don't have to be worried. Jeremy, on the hand, very worried. Kong hit the queen. It's an ace. It's an ace. Jeremy is going to outkick him. The big kicker is going to play. Ace is up for the king kicker. Going to beat Ace is up for the queen kicker. Jeremy Cotler has once again vaulted back into second place at the final table. Oh, boy. Kicks King Kong where it hurts. Oh, you're right, Vince. He's like the airplanes when they were shooting King Kong down from the top of the Empire State Building. Well, that hand signals the end of our first hour of coverage from the Brugada Poker Open. But before we go, Mike and Vince, please sum up tonight's play. Well, certainly you got to say Jeremy, who just folded in second chip position, things are going very well for him. But Kong Pham is the guy you got to salute so far at this final table. He came in as the chip leader. He's done nothing but extend it. Every move he has made has just been perfect, Vince. Yeah. Unlike poor Vanessa Selp, who's struggling a bit here. She certainly is. She is getting chipped away like a Justin Bieber haircut right now. He just, but you know what? I gotta give her credit. She's very poised. She knows this title is still very doable, and she's controlling her emotions. She could come back. Don't count her out. No, not at all. Thank you, guys. Yes, Vanessa is definitely a tough player. Please join us next time for continuing coverage of the Borgata Poker Open from Atlantic City. For Mike Sexton, Vince Van Patten, Tony Dunst, the Royal Flush Girls, and everyone at the World Poker Tour, I'm Lynn Gilmartin. See you next time on the WPT. I don't understand what this is for. <laughs> The World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com. Never lose a dime playing poker. Guaranteed. In Atlantic City, some players' dreams will come true, while others crash on the Jersey Coast. Continuing coverage of the $3.9 million Borgata Poker Open continues tonight on the WPT. Well, the crowd all standing. He is stuck on the drain. They are going bare knuckles in the center of the ring. He needs the extreme miracle. Oh! Oh! Good evening and welcome back to the WPT's continuing coverage of the Borgata Poker Open here at the beautiful Borgata Hotel, Casino and Spa. I'm Lynn Gilmartin. We've got quite the exciting final table in store for you, so I'm going to turn over the reins to Poker Hall of Famer Mike Sexton and Vince Van Patten to set the stage and recap the action we have seen so far. Guys, take it away. Well, thanks, Lynn. You know, the story at this final table to me has been the play of the 29-year-old from Naples, Florida, 
Kong Pham. This guy came to the final table as the chip leader. He's done nothing but increase that chip lead ever since he's gotten here for his first WPT final table. He has sent the message out to everybody, I'm the guy to beat here. If you're looking on the flip side of that, what's been the most surprising thing, probably the decrease in chips of Vanessa Selp. She's a true poker superstar, Vince. Be interesting to see if she can come back. Well, she's a great player, but she has gone colder than the maitre d' at a French restaurant. You know, it's very sad, but she has great composure. She's hanging in there. But let's talk about the guy, King Kong. I mean, he's amazing. That's his nickname. And he's incredible. You know, he's loose. He's a gambler. He likes to look at more hands than a manicurist. He's very the, impressive. The guy was a nail technician for eight years. That is right. Kong fam. And he's our chip leader. Let's go check the chip count and get back to the table. What are you doing to your fingernails, Mike? Well, just polishing them up there a bit. There you see Kong Pham with over 18 million. <laughs> the second place guy, Jeremy Kotler, has 5 million in chips. Yeah, the winner's going to take home 825,000. Big money here in the land of saltwater taffy, the beautiful Atlantic City, and the most beautiful hotel casino on the East Coast, Brigada. Here we go, a quick fold, and now a pair of eights for Jeremy Kotler. Yeah, certainly going to raise it up with this. Makes it 260000 to go. Yep. Used to be into commercial real estate. Now playing semi-professional. Gets a couple folds. But it's around to Vanessa Selps. Well, she's got Kojak. She's in the big blind. Call. And she will make this call. Vanessa, of course, one of the finest women players. Or just poker players around the world. And the flop comes up ace, queen, jack. Yeah, Vanessa's got two jacks and a straight draw on checks. Jeremy checks right behind her. Now the board pairs queens. Vanessa in front, but does she know it? No, she's going to check again. Kotler with just the pair of eights. And he is now going to bet the two eights. Yeah, 225. Jeremy bets 225,000. And the guy raises before the flop, and you just have bottom pair with looking at all those picture cards and aces. You're not happy about it. But Vanessa going to make the call here with the jacks. Down to the river we go. We will get lucky. I can assure you, Jeremy, not happy about that call. A now a seven comes off at the river. Vanessa, checks. Vanessa, they both check. Check, check. Vanessa turning up the two jacks to take down the pot. Well, Vanessa self went to Yale. Studied to be a lawyer, gave it all up for the dream of being a poker professional, and she's done incredibly well. I'm definitely extremely competitive. My friends always describe me as the most competitive person that they know. Uh-huh. And Vince, I'll tell you, she's got that look on her face. I can't believe that this lady's gonna beat me, and it's paining her that she's now behind. It's mostly a drive within myself to just always be the best that I can. You know, if I'm playing any kind of game, whether it's like a game of catchphrase with friends or a major poker tournament, I just wanna win. Well, Vince, she is competitive, no doubt about it. Even played you in tennis one time. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, we hit a few tennis balls. <laughs> she used to play a little bit, and it was yeah. fun to play with her. She's a good athlete. All right, back to this hand. Quick fold by Kong Pham, the chip leader. She can want to win all she wants at tennis, Vince, but she's not going to beat you. Yeah, Zeno out, <laughs> Vanessa. Also going out, and now it's on to David Randall. He's got a real hand, pair of jacks. David Randall's a poker pro out of Columbus, Ohio. Well, it's a battle of the blinds here. And what a hand to have in a small blind, and he is going to raise it up to 300,000. Yeah. Now Jeremy Cutler right behind him has an ace nine. Well, Jeremy has just less than two to one chip advantage over David. What do you do here with ace nine? All in. Whoa. Well, there you go. He's going all in. I call. David is going to make the call with the jacks. So David Randall out in front. Good chance for him to double up right here. Jack ball. There's his girlfriend, Christina Lindley. Five cards to come. All right, let's do the Jack's out in front. Here we go. Battle of the blinds. Two jacks versus ace nine. Oh, wow. Ace right in the door. Comes ace, king, eight. That's a pretty good spot for you. Well, you see the disappointment in 
David's face, he's sort of chuckling about it, but he's sick right now underneath. He needs two runners to make a straight or needs to catch a jack. Otherwise, he's going to be our fifth place finisher. Oh, man. Bad flop of David Randall. Going to the turn. Jacks have been unlucky all night long so far. Can David Randall pull out a miracle here? Here it is. Almost a 10 of diamonds. Well, the 10 comes off. This gives him more outs. A queen would now win the pot for him as he'd make Broadway an ace high straight. Jack or a queen. David gets a smile on his face now, realizing there's a potential here. And he has six outs, as we say. He needs a jack or a queen. Will he get it? No. Nope. Board pairs tens. And that's going to do it for David Randall, the 26 year old called Big Time out of Columbus, Ohio. He was pretty big time to get to this final table, Vance, but wasn't quite meant to be for him tonight. Uh, he walks away. He's going to take home 208,000. Disappointed. He looks for the camera. Picked up Jax in the small blind. Ray's got jammed on. I call. Not folding Jax to 20 bigs, so I played, I would say, my A game. Well, with David out, we're down to four players. Our current chip leader, Kong Pham, still well out in front. Yeah, he's got about 17.5. Jeremy Cutler with about 8.9 million. Then there's Vanessa Selps with 4.7. And Anthony Zeno with 4.3 million in chips. Action going to Anthony Zeno, and he's got the real hand of the night. The pair of kings, the Cowboys, saddle up. Yep, the 32-year-old pro out of Cranston, Rhode Island, going to raise it up here to Ooh. 250. But Vanessa, she's got a pair of sevens. And she does not get playful because she just calls lucky for her. Well, she's so aggressive, man. She would normally three bet, you would think, with that hand, but makes a call here. Jeremy, the real estate guy, out. King Kong not going to play. So we got two real hands here, kings versus sevens. Yeah. Anthony out in front with the kings, and here comes the flop. Queen six, deuce. Anthony with a nice over pair. How does he want to play it? Look at this. He's going to try to trap, disguise his potential. Wow, yeah, Vanessa yeah. checks right behind him with sevens. Yeah. Vince, that's playing above the rim. When you check two sevens on that flop after your opponent checks in front of you. Well, five of clubs on the turn. And now Zeno comes in with the bet. 400,000. Vanessa going to make the call. But I'm wowed she hadn't taken a more aggressive tact with two sevens in this hand. Now a 10 comes off. Helping neither player. Zeno with a beautiful over pair. 32 year old out of Rhode Island will put in the value bet of 675. And Vanessa just suspects that he's got a big duke here. But boy, oh boy, the way this hand was played after a check on the flop, do you really throw two sevens away? Zeno went to law school, says he wants to pay off a bunch of student loans if he wins. This is his opportunity of a lifetime. Oh, boy. This case is between two lawyers, Vince. Cool. And she is going to make this call. She's oh. not going to like this. No. Nope. And Anthony, is Perry Mason here as he takes down this pot That's against nice. Vanessa? Well, he played it well. The check on the flop was very good. I'll play. Vanessa shaking her head, not only because she made the call, but she's shaking her head, you know. How are these guys picking up all these hands? Kings, jacks, ace kings. Let me have some cards here. Right. She is some competitor. Anyway, the blinds are going up to 80 and 160 with a $20,000 Annie. Zeno with the quick fold. And now Vanessa, oh, she picked up another hand, pair of nines. Wow, well, the seven didn't work out for her. Let's see how the nines do when she's on the button. Well, she's going to raise it again up to 350. These guys might better be careful because it looks like a steam raise here after she just lost that last pot. But indeed, you can see she's got a hand. Jeremy Cutler, he won't play that mess. On to Kong Pham, our chip leader. Kong has got a king three of clubs. Well, he's also got a lot of chips. Yep. So he is going to take a look at a flop here, makes the call. He can afford to speculate. Here we go, nines versus king three, and the flop comes up. He's 6 4 deuce. Uh, Kong has a gut shot straight draw. Five would give him a straight. Vanessa happy to see that flop. She's got the over pair with the two nines and bets 350,000. <laughs> yep. Kong looking a little puzzled, trying to figure out exactly where he is, what she has. Kong fam married with a daughter. Currently unemployed, he says. 
playing by his poker wits. He's going to make this call, uh, hoping to catch. Two of the turn, a nine of clubs. Wow. Three of a con for Vanessa. Three nines for Vanessa. No help for Kong. He checks. Because there's a possible straight and possible flush <laughs> draw out there, Vince. You're probably not going to see Vanessa check here. I wouldn't check either once the guy called me on the flop. She is going to bet. Yeah. Kong can't stand it anymore. He goes out. Vanessa takes down the pot. Happy to pick one up. Yeah, well done. Everything went Vanessa's way in that hand. Yeah, she's sitting in fourth place in chip count with four players left. So everything she picks up, she's happy to get right now. It's time to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with more poker action. Plus, Tony Dunst will size up tonight's play in the Raw Deal. We'll take a look back at WPT's rich poker history and see how the Royal Flush Girls shake off their jet lag with a full-service adventure at Borgata. It's all coming up when we return on the WPT. Season 12 of the World Poker Tour is brought to you by ClubWPT.com, where VIP members can win their share of 100000 in cash and prizes every month. ClubWPT.com, never lose a dime playing poker, guaranteed. We're back for more WPT coverage from Borgata. Here we go. Four players remain in Atlantic City. Where there you see the chip graph. And as you can see, Kong Pham has nearly half the chips in play with four players left. Living in Naples, Florida. Over 16 million right now. He's got ace deuce he's going to raise. 3.30 to go. Raise up to 3.30 from Kong. Lays it down. Anthony going out. Vanessa. Now Vanessa Selps also won't play that. And now Jeremy Kotler with the weapons of mass destruction. The pair of aces. Wow, how do you get them? Dream hand for Jeremy here. Over to Jeremy who makes the call. <coughs> Look at this, Vince. He is just going to call here. He is not going to re-raise with two aces. Now, folks, that shows me you got to have a lot of heart and not afraid to play pots when you don't re-raise with two aces before the flop. And the flop comes up. 9-9-5. Nine, nine, five. Five. Kong fan not hitting there. Well, Jeremy has checked, and Kong is making the continuation bet of 375000 I look for some action to take place here soon by Jeremy with the aces, and there it is. Makes it a smooth 800,000. Jeremy, he willing to put, you know, the pressure on the, the player. He, I saw him four betting me like three times and other player too. So he's not afraid to put a chip in, you know. Especially when you have aces. Wow, look oh, at this. Oh, Kong oh. is re-raising 1.6 million. King Kong slipped on the banana right there. Well, Vance, I can tell you, if you're Jeremy Kotler, you are sick right now. You're fearful your opponent has flopped three nines. You didn't raise before the flop, and you're saying to yourself, don't tell me I'm going to get broke out of this tournament because I didn't re-raise before the flop, and this guy slopped into three nines. Two seven. Well, that's what you do. Two you seven. come back over the top. You make a 2-7 to go. Yeah, I really like this bet by Jeremy, and I like it for this reason. He knows if his opponent re-raises once again, he's probably got three nines for sure. He's going to find out right here, right now, rather than just calling and guessing on the next street. Yeah, there's Jeremy's brother, also a terrific poker player, Zach. Yeah, almost made this final table, finished 15th in this tournament. Kong Pham got himself in a mess of trouble here. Just got out of line, and now he's got nothing. Well, will he release? Can't blame him for making this play, Vince, but... I can't blame him, but You better put the brakes on now after it's the creative. guy has re-raised him yet again. It's creative, but... Yeah. He finally lays it down, and Jeremy Cotler, the consultant, semi-professional poker player out of Cleveland, Ohio, will take that down. Well, Vince, I know this. By slow playing those aces, Jeremy probably picked up 1.6 million more than he would have had by raising preflop. The fact that my brother and I both made it so deep was really a unique experience. We were really hoping to both make the final table, but unfortunately, it didn't turn out well for him at the end. Yeah, you outlasted me, so that's a little stinger. Would have liked to be in the final table with him. But hopefully I can come through and represent for the family. Well, you know what they say. 
the family that plays together stays together. <laughs> Always that goes broke together. Well, know. right now, <clears throat> Kong Fam's chip count going down. Jeremy Cotler's going up. With those two aces, he has closed the gap considerably on the chip leader. Back down to the money pit we go. Anthony Zeno with an attractive king, queen of hearts. Got some well-dressed men at this table tonight, Vince. Yep. Perhaps they'll set a new trend instead of guys wearing those baggy pants and sloppy T-shirts. He has raised it to 375. Vanessa out. And now Cotler also won't play. Yeah, the Buckeye going out. On to Kung Pham. He's got a little suited connector. He's got some money out there. He's got those kind of cards you like to see flops with. He makes the call. 6-5 versus King-Queen. We are a flopping ace eight, three of diamonds. No one hits any of that. No, neither player happy with that flop. Kong is checked. And Anthony looks like he's going to make the continuation bet. Indeed, he is. Like he should, 500,000. And he gets the job done. So a nice continuation bet by Anthony taking down that pot. We have seen some great poker here, Brigada. Over the years, let's take a look back at one of these events on WPT Rewind. Oh, boy, this could be a 22-year-old belly flop here by Vivek. Come on in. I call. He does go all in, and he's quickly called by Vivek. He squeezes me and him with tens. What am I supposed to do? So Mark's safe in the dream position. Two aces versus two tens. Here comes the flop. Oh, oh, a 10 yeah, comes on the flop. Yeah, 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 has taken the lead. Oh, 10. He looks like a walking jack-in-the-box as he's jumping up and down there. He's flopped three tens. And Mark Safe is just devastated. You can feel the dagger in his heart. Vivek can't look. Burying his head in the sand. Here comes the river card. Yeah. Well, the nine of diamonds comes off. So Vivek jumping for joy, and you can't blame him there. This is so exciting. This is so exciting. Oh, man, I just love watching Mark Safe play. He made a few final tables. I don't think he's ever been the same since. Well, Vance, that is just tough luck when you get all your money in pre-flop with aces like he did. But yep. to Vivek Rajkumar's credit, he went on to take down the title after outdrawing Mark there. Oh, we've seen great joy and pain in this very room over the years. <laughs> Back the felt we go as four players remain here. 350. Vanessa with Queen 10 has raised the 350. Even though she's in fourth chip position, going to stay aggressive. Raises here with the Queen 10. Jeremy Cotler right behind her picks up two sixes. Jeremy well aware how aggressive Vanessa plays. Be interesting to see what he's going to do here with the two sixes. Will he just call? Will he three bet? He is going to re-raise to 825,000. He really does. Couple folds behind them. And it's back on Vanessa. Now well, Vanessa's problem is she's sitting in four chip position and just doesn't have 500,000 to spare to call this raise with just a queen 10. Yep, and she has to muck. So once again, Jeremy Cotler, so impressive. A semi-professional player. He has just taken it to one of the greats, Vanessa Selps, in a very big way. We're coming back with more action here on the World Poker Tour. Welcome back to Borgata and the WPT, where four players are battling it out to be this season's Borgata Poker Open champion. Season 12 is just getting started and we are already seeing some movement in the WPT Player of the Year race. Legends of Poker champion Jordan Christos is leading the way, but right on his heels is Dan Heimiller, who added to his point total with a 13th place finish here at Borgata. But note that tonight's champion will tie Jordan at the top of the leaderboard with 1,200 points. We'll keep you posted on the standings all season long, but for now, let's get back to the action here at Borgata. Well, there you see Kong Fam still out in front with 14 million. Jeremy Kotler, however, has 11 million. And right now, Vanessa Selps on the short stack with just three and a half million. All right, to the game we go. Quick fold. And now Kong Fam with ace five has raised to 330. Zeno out, Vanessa Selps. Originally out of Brooklyn. She has eight seven, Mike. She's in the big blind, meaning she got money out there. So we'll see what she's going to do here. Call. She's going to make the call and see a flop. We're going to go to a flop. 
Flop Ball comes up hard. King Jack Flop. Deuce. No help Jack to either player. First, Vanessa checks. Vanessa checks. Kong and Kong checks. checks right behind her. Doesn't make the continuation bet. Board right. pairs Jacks okay. now. Jack Kong out in front with the ace high. Vanessa checks. Uh, Vanessa checks. Kong Again, Kong checks. Just doesn't want to fall in a trap here. But he's done it now as the eight comes on the river. Vanessa now is the best hand with Jackson eight. Action is on her. And Vince, because of the check on the flop and the turn, Vanessa's got to feel certain her two eights are the best hand. And she is going to bet 475,000. Yeah, but now Kong Pham. Well, he wasn't heavily invested. He just felt like these were it's an action flop and that she was going to trap him. <laughs> He was wrong with that assumption, but now... Oh, look at this, Vince. He made a mistake not making the continuation yep. bet on the flop and makes another mistake by paying her off on the river. Jackson. Kong Pham tripping over himself there and Vanessa Self picking up some much-needed chips. Nicely done by Vanessa. Do not count her out, folks. She may have gone down, down, down for a while, but in case she gets on a little roll, they all better duck. Boy, she is as tough as a steak at Denny's, no doubt about it. Can she come back? Well, she got an assist right there by Kong because he didn't make the continuation bet on the flop after raising pre-flop. All right, Kong going to take a breather here. And now Anthony Zeno with A7 and the button goes to 350. Vanessa, another decent hand here as King Queen in the small blind. And he's a 20,000 blonde, so 81.60 at this point. 